Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug. In this video, we're going to learn about how to calculate a numerical value for change in entropy, delta S, for any chemical reaction. Now, in the last video, you might recall that we learned how to determine or how to predict the sign of delta S, positive or negative, just by looking at the chemical reaction. Well, in this video, we're actually going to put some numbers to that. So, the way we calculate delta S for a chemical reaction looks like this. Delta S of a reaction equals the sum of all the individual entropies of the products minus the sum of the entropies of the reactants. Now, if this looks familiar to you, that's good because this should look familiar to you. Way back in our thermodynamics unit, which I believe was unit six, we learned how to do something very, very similar to this, but for delta H. And we said that delta H is the sum of the uh, enthalpies of formation of the products minus the sum of the enthalpies of formation of the reactants. It works the exact same way, except we're going to use S, or entropies, for this. Now, if, if you're following along with me in the workbook, then you should have a copy of the thermodynamic constants. If not, I have a link down in the description for you to download that and use that. And in most textbooks, and as well as the uh, list of thermodynamic uh, constants that I provided for you, this is the second column. Usually, enthalpy is in the first column, H, S entropy is in the second column, and here in a future video we're going to talk about Gibbs free energy, that's the third column. So for entropy, let's try the delta S for this reaction right here. So carbon solid plus water vapor yields carbon monoxide gas and hydrogen gas. So we're just going to use the thermodynamic data numbers given to us uh, on the paper, and if you don't have that, that's okay. You can just follow along and watch here. So for carbon, it's a fairly low number. It's 5.7 joules per mole per Kelvin. And once again, we have to multiply this by the coefficient. And there's only a one here, one mole of this stuff. So it's, it's still just 5.7 joules. In the water vapor, we look up on the chart, we see it's 188.8 joules per mole per Kelvin. And once again, the coefficient is one, so it's just, well, it's multiplied by one, so that doesn't change. On the other side of the arrow, we have carbon monoxide gas, which has an entropy of 197.7 joules per mole per Kelvin. And we have, of course, only one mole of that, so that doesn't change. And the hydrogen gas has an entropy of 130.7 joules per mole per Kelvin. And there's only one mole of that. So you can see it doesn't change. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the sum of the products and subtract the sum of the reactants. So if we take the, the reactants over here, 5.7 plus 188.8, that adds up to 194.5 joules per mole per Kelvin. On the product side, 197.7 plus 130.7 gets us a total of about 328.4 joules per mole per Kelvin. So once again, delta S is products minus reactants. That's the right side minus the left side. So when I compute 328.4 minus 194.5, I'm going to find the uh, overall delta S for this reaction, which is a positive 133.9 joules per mole per Kelvin. Now, in the last video, we learned how to predict the sign. If you were to do that for this reaction, notice we have a solid mixed with a gas, and the products are all gases. So solid, you know, a solid is down here, it's the lowest, and then all gases would be much higher, wouldn't it? So I would predict the delta S for this reaction to be positive, and now we've just computed it using this thermodynamic data, and we found that it is indeed a positive value. It's right there. So yes, this, this reaction is going to represent an increase in entropy. Any reaction can be done the same way if you have that thermodynamic data available to you. If you learned something, go ahead and slam that like button. My name is Jeremy Krug. I've been teaching AP Chemistry for over 20 years, and I hope you uh, are subscribed if you haven't already done so. 
Uh, if you do so, you'll have access to all 100 plus of my AP Chemistry daily lessons, as well as my AP review videos, problem walkthroughs, and all kinds of good stuff. So join me in my next video where we're going to start talking about thermodynamic favorability. Hope to see you then.